I'm surrounded by about a thousand square feet of growing space in my garden. And everything that I grow in this garden, at least intentionally, um, is edible. So today I want to talk to you guys about what my groceries that I buy actually look like and what the meals that I make actually look like. I literally have the receipts that we need. So let's get into it. First things first is I am not one of those like buy only what I need and then immediately make meals kind of people. I definitely stock up on things in bulk and I wait until they're on sale. And I can do this because I have good systems in place to store things, especially meat. I have a big deep freezer where I can like pile all the meat that's on sale and then use it slowly over a longer period of time. And so I think what you'll find as we go over my grocery list versus the meals that I've made this month is that they don't necessarily match up. Um, I buy a lot of food and especially this month you caught me on a big stock up month. I bought a lot of food that will be used over probably the next six months or so. All right, so let's get into it. I'm going to put this list on the screen as well. This month I got feta, oat milk, tortilla chips, parmesan cheese, biscuits from the bakery, masa flour, bananas, lots of chickpea pasta, hemp seeds, cacao nibs, coconut milk in the can, olive oil, and one of these was like a massive like bulk thing of olive oil that I use for my pesto. I got some bottled fruit juice that was on sale. I bought local zucchini, which I think is maybe the funniest thing on this list because most gardeners this time of year have more zucchini than they can handle. But I have stopped growing squashes in my area because the squash bugs absolutely decimate all my plants before I can ever get any sort of harvest from them. I bought regular milk. I got coffee. I stocked up because it was on super sale. Fritos, some kefir, bacon, chicken thighs, ground beef, pork tenderloin, kombucha, ham, and white rice. And that is the entire grocery list for the entire month. I spent $306.77 on all of that. Now, if we look over at the meals that I actually made, you'll see very few of these things are in these meals. Um, and like I said, that's because I buy in bulk and I also am trying to use as much fresh from the garden as I can right now while it is in season. I also want you to keep in mind that I am in charge of feeding me and mostly just me. Um, I have friends come over sometimes, I have my partner over sometimes, but like by and large, I'm just feeding a single person. So in the mornings, I usually have coffee and that is just coffee with oat milk, nothing else in it. Um, and then I will wait until lunch to actually eat and usually around lunch I will eat a leftover of something that I made for dinner earlier in the week. So mostly what we're looking at is the dinners that I created with these groceries and with stuff from the garden. So I made pork tenderloin with mashed potatoes and noodle beans. That's from the grocery list and then the potatoes I grew, noodle beans I grew. I made uh, an Indian dish called Malai Kofta that is mostly, I, I made a vegan version so it was like potatoes and tofu um, and then a few different herbs from the garden were used in that. Sometimes instead of eating leftovers for lunch I will make smoothies so that is using all the berries from the garden. I like to add a little bit of the ginger that I grow, a little bit of mint, um, and then occasionally I make a heartier smoothie if I know that I'm like trying to fully replace a meal. And that is where things like the hemp seeds and the cacao nibs come in. I have a uh, protein powder that I add into that and that just becomes the meal replacement for when I literally can't summon the energy to do anything else. 
Um, I make a lot of pesto pasta this time of year. I use exclusively chickpea pasta so that I don't have to worry about like cooking and adding a meat to every single meal. I've got the protein right there in the pasta. Um, I made biscuits and gravy and that was nothing from the garden. It was just, I saw the biscuits on sale in the bakery and I wanted biscuits and gravy. Um, spaghetti and sausage. So that one used my tomatoes from the garden. Stir fry is the one that I make like pretty often this time of year. I would say three, four times a week even. And that is just like random vegetables from the garden all chopped up and stir fried with rice and flavorings. I do make a lot of homemade pizza with my partner. And this is like the main thing that tomato sauce from the garden goes towards. I also do a pesto pizza with pesto from the garden that I think is excellent. Um, I make like quote unquote nachos for myself sometimes when I don't have energy. And that's just like a bunch of tortilla chips with like some of my homemade salsa and some like cheese sprinkled on top and microwaved. And this, this month I also made a zucchini pasta, which is the reason that I went out and bought some of that local zucchini in the first place. Um, I saw, you know, a chef on TikTok make it and uh, I had to try it out. It was very excellent, by the way. If I was growing zucchini, I would be making that all the time. Hey, buddy. Come here. Oh. Hi. How you doing? Are you ready to go inside? Come on. Let's go inside and look at what I think is one of the most important pieces of this entire puzzle, which is the foods that I'm like putting away and grabbing from to use in meals. All right, so welcome to my home. It's a little messy, but you can see I've got jars, 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 jars of stuff put up and that's not even like the whole pantry. Up on these shelves, I do have mostly tomato products. We have diced tomatoes, all of that is salsa. Some of this is um, cacciatore sauce, some curried tomatoes, some regular tomato sauce. Over here is pressure canned vegetable stock. And then this entire shelf is jams. Some of the staples that I use in most of my meals that I grow myself, I have onions here. This year I decided to do only red onions. I've got some more in here. I also am actively drying hot peppers to make spices to go in my meals. And if we come around this way, we can see all the garlic and some of the dried herbs that I've put up for the year. Um, and on the spice rack, we actually see a lot of the spices that I make and use from the garden. Mostly we've got a bunch of hot peppers. I've got some dried herbs down here. I also make my own onion powder and garlic powder. This is, this needs to be ground because I'm actually out of powder powder. But these are just dried garlic cloves that I grind on demand for garlic powder. I've got my dried sweet peppers that I add to soups and stews. Inside my actual pantry, I've got sun-dried tomatoes from the garden, a few different jars of dried beans that I've grown. It's by no means like a lot, but definitely I had this jar full at the beginning of the summer. Um, I've got some dried fava beans as well that I'm almost done going through. Dried noodle beans. These are dried beans from the blue cocoa pole beans that I grow. Um, and these are also from that same plant, but different years. If we open the freezer, we will find frozen hot peppers. We will find frozen pesto cubes lots of frozen berries. This is frozen ginger that I grew. I've also got in here oh, a few frozen blueberries. 
these are my scraps for vegetable stock. And I think that's all the stuff I've grown from the freezer. I also keep on hand a few dried mushrooms that I've grown to make um, really hearty stalks and you know more general dried herbs. This was a garlic braid that is empty and needs to be replaced. And so I think in looking at all of that, the grocery list and the meals start to make a little bit more sense. Um, I haven't necessarily maximized for like most calories coming out of my garden. I don't grow any grains and I don't grow any oils, but I do kind of maximize on the expensive stuff, like buying spices in particular is incredibly expensive. And fresh herbs, I've got fresh herbs all year depending on the season. Um, and those things really cut down on your grocery budget. Not to mention all of the actual convenience meals that I'm able to put up for myself and then feel good about eating later. So we saw the pesto cubes in there um, I, all year long. I will be getting one of those out and defrosting it, just boiling some pasta and then boom, meal. Maybe I'll chop up some sun-dried tomatoes on top. And it is excellent. It feels very healthy and it's super easy. I almost forgot to show you guys the potatoes down here. They're very recently harvested and I need to process them. I think I'm going to process a lot of them into freeze fro frozen hash browns um, and then try and use a lot of them fresh as well. If you are growing a garden or thinking about growing a garden, one of the biggest tips I can give you as far as actually utilizing all the food that you're growing and feeling good about it is taking the time to actually learn how to cook a bunch of different meals. And I think that that will help you in the long run to start mixing and matching, if that makes sense. So like with stir fry, for example, that's a really easy one to start with. You learn how to make stir fry in a way that you like, right? And then you just start substituting vegetables and you say, oh, I have eggplant this week and green beans. So it's going to be an eggplant and green bean stir fry. Or you are in the middle of winter and you've got some carrots and some rutabaga and suddenly you've got like a much heartier stir fry. And you know, like this meal can just keep getting mixed up to use whatever veggies you have on hand. And so similarly, other recipes can be somewhat modified in order to make use of what you've got. And in addition to that, the longer your catalog of like meals you know how to make, the easier it'll be to look at what you have available in front of you from the garden and say, oh, I know what I can make with this. And I guess the other half of that is always having the same staples on hand. I always have rice on hand. I always have things like flour. I always, always have a bunch of oils on hand. Sorry, big sneeze. Um, I keep a lot of different canned goods on hand. So like the canned coconut milk, that is really nice to pull out to make a quick curry, which is similar to stir fry in that once you know how to make curry, you can just start adding whatever random vegetables to it that you've grown and it'll still be really, really delicious. Chickpea pasta, another thing I keep on hand um, because it is just so easy. It is a pasta and it's got all that protein in it. And this list could go on and on, but I think you get the idea. And for you, that list might look very different. I'm not saying that you have to copy exactly what I'm doing, but I would say find the stuff that you like to make, find the staples that you need to make that stuff, and then start expanding that list and I think you'll find that using the produce that comes out of your garden will come a lot more easily to you and you won't feel like you have to absolutely construct a brand new meal around like this veggie that you got out of your garden. If you want to learn more about how to decide what to plant and when to plant it I recommend this video up here. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time happy gardening!